Well, thank you, Heavenly Father, for the day. This is a day that you've made and we shall rejoice in it. Lord, we just come before you with uh, hearts full of praise. And Lord, we want to praise your name, lift you up as the highest authority. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And uh, all God's people said? Amen. Amen. So let's worship the King.
ask that you go before us to prepare a way for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you haven't left us as orphans, Lord, but you're there for us continually. And you're at the right hand of the Father interceding continually because of your love, Lord. So great a love that we don't even understand it, Lord.
the great I am. You are the king. You are the risen one. You are above all things and in all things and through all things. You're a holy, righteous God. And there's no other name above you. And it says at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And today we confess that in this church, that you are the king. You are the risen one. You are above all things. time for the Holy Spirit and God if you have a word of praise or thanks or something on your heart feel free to share God you're so good Jesus, why don't we give him a love offering?
So just as we come around the communion table, I'm just going to read a passage, and it was after uh, Jesus had been with his disciples at the um, Last Supper, and this is around the time when he was about to be betrayed. I'm just going to pick up a few things. And, uh, you know, I love the Word of God because sometimes you read stuff and then when you read it again, you go, wow, I didn't actually see that before. Or I saw it, but I didn't really pay, take attention to it. But in John 18, verse 1, it says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who portrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Now, I've read that plenty of times, but... Something that struck me first, at first, that word kedron actually means is the word turbid, which is where we get the word disturbed from. And here's the interesting thing Jesus knew where he would be betrayed, he knew the events, he knew what was going to happen. But look at this it says, Jesus who betrayed him knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Isn't that amazing? Jesus would often meet with his disciples the place where he knew he was going to be betrayed. And one of those disciples was Judas. And I just see that as Jesus embracing what the Father had asked him to do. You know, um, we struggle at times, you know, I talked about last week, we, I talked about how what's coming is persecution, betrayal, hatred. But Jesus embraced it. He knew that he actually came to this earth to die. He knew that why he came. Yes he, yes, he healed the sick. Yes, he did many miracles. But that wasn't the purpose for him coming. The reason those things came, because the king of the kingdom was here. Amen? And so when the kingdom is here, those things that are, are true of the kingdom is true of the king and true of everything that's going on around him. But his purpose to come was to die for the human race. So he would even meet with his disciples regularly in the place where he knew his betrayal was going to take place. I just find that amazing. That, he, that just shows how much Jesus embraced what the Father wanted him to do. If it was me, I'd like, I know what's going to happen there. I'm going to stay well away from that. <laughs> but that wasn't Jesus. And then it goes on to say, Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Who are you seeking? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. This is one of the I ams that Jesus said. There's many of them. But when he actually was being betrayed, he said the words, I am. I'm the one you're looking for, but I am the one that actually met Moses. He claimed himself as the I am. And Jesus, who betrayed him and stood there, looked. Now, when he had said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell on the ground. That, that um, statement was so powerful that the troops that actually came for him were slain in the spirit. Isn't that amazing? Because you know what, what was happening right at that moment? Was that God came in human flesh and now was about to actually be, go to the cross. That was the pivotal moment. That was where he was being arrested to be taken to die on a cross. This is where all history, all future and all, all history meets because now, you know, for three years Jesus was ministering. You know, they didn't like him. They were trying to trap him, all those things. But right now he was being arrested and taken to be the, the blemish, unblemished lamb and to actually be put on a cross. And when they come to get him, he said, are you the one? He said, I am. The I am was actually allowing himself to be taken and put on a cross. And that moment was so powerful that the guys he said it to all fell on the ground. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And Judas, who betrayed him, was there oh, in, in verse 7. And then he asked them again, saying, who are you seeking? <laughs> when they finally got back up, he said, who are you looking for? <laughs> and they said... We were looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I told you, I am him. I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that they might be, it might be fulfilled which was spoken of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. And then Simon Peter, having 
a sword drew, struck it with the high, the high priest's servant and cut off his ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, now listen to these words, put your sword in your sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? In other words, he says, you, now's not the time to fight. Now's not the time to try to protect me. This is my choice to actually do what the father has asked me to do. Isn't that amazing? That he's... <laughs> First of all, he would meet in the very place he was betrayed, and then he willingly went and he said, I am the I am, you can take me now, I am doing what the Father has asked me to do. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, just going to finish with this before we take, take off the cup, the very cup that the Father asked him to take off, we're taking off today. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, Paul says this, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And so here's Jesus hanging around the place he's going to be betrayed, going and saying, I am the I am. You can take me now because I choose to drink of this cup from my father. And he knew what that meant, you know, a bloody crucifixion. But Paul calls this for us the cup of blessing. What was for Jesus, which caused him to actually have you know, sweat blood, for us is actually a blessing, the cup of blessing. So today as we take of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, let's just remember that Jesus willingly went you know, as, a, as a servant, as, the, as Isaiah said, the lamb to the slaughter and did what the Father asked of him so that we can actually have this cup of blessing and remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. So let's just take that together. Lord, we just thank you for such love. Lord, not only did you know the mission and the reason that you were sent to come and die for the human race, but you embraced it, Lord God. You embraced it in, as obedience to the Father. Lord, knowing that it would be a cruel death, but it would actually bring freedom to us, Lord God. What was cruel and um, a, a tough cup to take for you was a blessing for us. And so we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for dying for us and for willingly laying down your life for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thanks. I've got to come over here. Okay. We're going to lift up some people in prayer this morning, just that need it. But um, oh, just before it, can Ros, can I share what I saw? I saw a picture of you and in your hand you're holding precious gems. And you keep looking at them. And as if to say to the Father, what do I do with these? Whoa. And I feel the Lord's placed them there, but he wants you to scatter them. And he'll show you where. So I feel like you've got so much. They're, they're precious gems. You've got so much preciousness in you, but the Lord wants you to give it out and, 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 and to be a blessing to others. Now, in the scripture says, don't cast your pearls before swine. And I think that's the reason why you've hung on so tightly, because you don't want to give them to the wrong people. But I believe, whoa, the Lord is saying he'll guide you and he'll lead you in. You'll know what to do with them. And, uh, you know, it, you'll be a blessing. You are a blessing. You're a continual blessing. And he wants you to know that that you are continually. Um, he is well pleased with his daughter. He never not thinks of you in the highest esteem. You know, he, he just loves you with an unfailing love. And nothing you've done has displeased him. It says in the word of God, no height nor death can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Nothing. You know, there's a song, you know, nothing you can do. What's the words? can make him love you more and nothing that you've done can make him close the door because of his great love he gave his only son everything was done so you would come so he just says daughter just come and you know uh, ask and i will give you I seek and i and you know you've seeked him and he said yes i'm here i'm waiting to direct you Oh, amen. That's what I felt. Whoa. 
what the Lord is saying.